Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Josh, and today we're going to dive into how to identify vintage Ralph Lauren clothing. And it's a big subject with lots of details, so let's get right into it. Let's go. In 1967, Ralph Lauren began his fashion adventure and has since become perhaps the greatest American designer. And into the 90s, uh, began to be embraced by hip hop and urban cultures, not just the traditional prep uh, aesthetic that had sort of preceded it. And it became a streetwear brand in many ways. Being worn by Raekwon and Kanye West, Ralph Lauren was cemented into popular culture and young people and old people alike all can sort of agree on their affection for Ralph Lauren's brands. And because of the storied and iconic history, uh, Ralph Lauren's vintage pieces and some of their modern pieces are very collectible and desired by many. So from Polar Bear to Snow Beach to the stadium collection and all the things in between, there are so many iconic Ralph Lauren pieces and some of them are out there in the wild and you might stumble across them. The question is how can you identify vintage Ralph Lauren clothing? Well, it is a bit complicated as there are, you know, so many sub brands underneath the Ralph Lauren design house logo, you know, such like Ralph Ralph Lauren, Lauren Ralph Lauren, Ralph Lauren, uh, Polo Sport, Polo Ralph Lauren, uh, Polo Jeans, Ralph Lauren, RLX, Polo Golf, Rugby, uh, Ralph, Ralph Lauren, Polo Country, and on and on and on and on. So it can be kind of confusing. Unfortunately, we can't go over all of those brands here in this video, but we'll go over some of the major points that will be helpful for you if you're finding the stuff in a thrift store or in somebody's closet, maybe your own closet, and help you understand your item better. Now, because there are so many sub brands underneath the Ralph Lauren label, that does actually kind of help us to a degree because many of these lines only ran for a certain period of time. So it can help us identify whether they're vintage or not by simply being a part of that collection. And the first one we want to address is Polo Sport. Polo Sport launched in 1992 with a stadium collection right around the Olympic time, though they weren't official sponsors of the Olympics, they sort of jumped on the bandwagon. And this is one of the things that really sparked their streetwear credibility um, as uh, they released the stadium collection, the snow beach, and all of these wonderful iconic pieces. Um, and you can see the Polo Sport logo, very popular logo through the 90s. Uh, here, just big, bold Polo Sport, Ralph Lauren underneath. Let's take a look at the tag. The Polo Sport brand ran from about 92 to the early 2000s and was then discontinued. So you can be pretty confident that if you find Polo Sport items out in the wild with this tag, uh, you're most likely holding a vintage Ralph Lauren piece. Um, and because it's so iconic, it does have quite a bit of desirability on the secondary market. Um, and its collectability is incredible and the aesthetic still uh, rings true today. Now a caveat about Polo Sport is that they were sort of reintroduced in about 2019 um, as sort of a throwback collection, limited in quantity. Um, but by then, uh, Ralph Lauren has changed their internal uh, tags so they're fairly simple to distinguish. And it has the modern tag seen here. It is a new reprint of the uh, Polo Sport line. If it has one of the older tags, it's from the 90s. Now, one of the earliest Ralph Lauren sublabel brands is Chaps Ralph Lauren. And these guys came out in 1978 as sort of an answer to the counterfeit market that was growing around Ralph Lauren stuff. And they lasted through into the uh, late 90s and created some pretty dope pieces in my opinion, sort of underrated, um, still following similar aesthetics as the other Ralph Lauren brands, bold colors, big bold graphics and uh, advertising and, and branding. Um, they definitely were not nearly as expensive as some of these other pieces or not nearly as collectible either, uh, but there's plenty of it out there and some of it looks pretty dope. Now, because this line lasted from 1978 to the late 90s, 
Uh, anything you find, Chaps Ralph Lauren, is vintage. That's sort of a rule. They haven't gone back and remade this, even though the Chaps brand, now separate from Ralph Lauren's branding, is still under the parent company of Ralph Lauren. They don't share the same branding anymore. So you see this brand with Chaps and Ralph Lauren, it's vintage. That's an easy lock rule. Now the next one that's simple to identify is polo jeans. Lasting from about the mid 90s to about 2006 when they were discontinued, there are certainly a few pieces that aren't technically vintage, uh, but because this collection is so synonymous with the mid to late 90s uh, and maybe early 2000s, uh, they generally are lumped in together. And I think they're actually a fairly underrated um, brand label. Uh, they were licensed to a different company to do the manufacturing and stuff, but I think some of the coolest pieces that I've run across are from the Polo uh, Jeans label. This is my favorite personal piece. It's got the American flag on here with the RL and the blue. Uh, just an incredibly useful and dope looking denim jacket. You can see the tag here, it's black. This tag was used for most of the polo jeans stuff with a couple different variations you can see here. Now those are three major sub brands underneath the Ralph Lauren label. Obviously we haven't gotten to Polo Ralph Lauren yet, which is obviously the biggest, but those three are fairly easy to distinguish whether or not they are vintage. And because Polo Sport and uh, Polo Jeans had some uh, pretty iconic pieces from that era, um, it's important to recognize that those are vintage. And now there are a couple of Ralph Lauren sub-brands that while not technically vintage, uh, because they have been discontinued, have some collectability and desirability in the market and therefore you might want to pick up. And one of those is the Denim and Supply Ralph Lauren. And they made lots of like bohemian, military looking stuff. You can see they kind of combine the, the, the tassel here, the sort of hippie looking tassel with the military vibe. It's got a pretty unique tag. And this line was run from about 2011 to 2016 when it was discontinued as Ralph Lauren was trying to sort of renovate and streamline their business. Um, but there's a lot of cool pieces within this that uh, still have quite a bit of desirability. Not technically vintage again, but their desirability doesn't necessarily come from how old they are, but how unique their designs were. And now another line similar to that that's not technically vintage is the Polo Ralph Lauren Black Label. And it was sort of a, just a slight step down from the purple label, which is the luxury Ralph Lauren line um, and very expensive, but the black label's a little bit more accessible, but being still very luxurious. And that was discontinued in 2014 or so and uh, has like a 10 year period of existence. While they're not technically vintage now, some of that black label stuff is still uh, desired. It wasn't nearly as branded as some of the other lines, so the collectability may be a bit lower, but it's still high quality clothing. Now I've saved the hardest for last and obviously the most popular, that being Polo Ralph Lauren and another one of the sub brands that sort of um, is right above it in quality in my opinion, and that's Polo Country. You can see right here, this is a Polo Country piece. It has a label that reads Polo Country Ralph Lauren Authentic Dry Goods. Um, that is not the original logo. This sub brand was begun in the 80s and actually instead of saying Polo Country in the little banner there, it just said Country. That can give you an idea of whether or not you're talking about a much older uh, Polo Country piece. Um, or a little bit newer. Now the trouble here is that like all of these Ralph Lauren pieces from their main line uh, labels, they did not change their branding very much. If you're familiar with our Levi's series, uh, Levi's changed their, their internal branding, care tags, and all these different production things very often. So it's really easy to sort of associate one change with one year or era or not. With Ralph Lauren, that's unfortunately not the case. There are some things that we're going to talk about, but you have to remember it could be a little more complicated because they didn't make a lot of changes. The first change you can be confident of is around the early to mid 90s, they changed the green label here to say Polo Country rather than just country. So if it says country in the little banner, it's earlier than the early to mid 90s. So that's vintage. Um, if it says something later than that, you might have to rely on a few other things. The same goes for Polo Ralph Lauren pieces. 
the branding and the tag on the inside where we would typically try to get some information about the age of the item is the pretty much the same as it's been since the Polo Ralph Lauren inception. Now again, they did make a change more recently in the last five to six years or so. Um, here you can see the more modern Polo Ralph Lauren tag and then what has normally been the standard for Polo Ralph Lauren tags for many years. Now because this tag didn't change very much, it can be a little bit confusing and vague as to whether or not your item is particularly old or not. But there is one way that I use to sort of give me an idea of an item that might be older. So let's take a look at the most modern piece right here on this rack and it's this uh, Polo Country piece. And let's take a look on the side. Most Ralph Lauren pieces will have tags here on the side of the garment. Now you can see here on this piece, it says 0619. That is a production date of this garment. They have recently started adding that to more modern uh, Ralph Lauren pieces, but unfortunately we don't have that information on older pieces. Now, while this one has a date, let's take a look at this Polo Ralph Lauren piece and let's look at its tags on its side. Now notice here it's only two tags. That little sliver uh, behind the first one that looks similar to the first one we looked at doesn't have a production date. So we know it's probably older than 2019, obviously, and since it has the older tag, probably older than 2016, 15 or so. So we're looking at perhaps early 2000s, mid to early 2000s. Now let's go back to the Polo Sport piece that has a side tag as well. Notice it only has one tag. And this leads me to the rule or more like a guideline that I use to sort of help me date items. Just like government bureaucracy, the longer it exists and the longer it goes on in time, the more complicated and extra it becomes. So the oldest piece here in this collection from the early 90s has one tag. The piece that perhaps is from the early 2000s has two tags. And the modern piece has like a million tags. So you do the math and tell me which one do you think is the oldest? It's clearly the one with the one tag. So while it may not be 100% accurate, it can help you get a better idea. If you find an item similar to this out in the wild and it has one tag instead of, you know, 11 or five, I think it's actually five, then you're looking at probably an older piece of Ralph Lauren garment. Now additionally, other vintage, now additionally, other vintage guides do apply. Um, the oldest, oldest Ralph Lauren stuff is definitely gonna be made in America or Canada. It wasn't until about the mid eighties that Ralph Lauren started producing outside of the United States. And likewise, if you find a Ralph Lauren shirt with a printed tag instead of a fabric tag, that is likely a more modern piece, not from the vintage eras. Vintage eras didn't have the printed tags, they had fabric tags that stuck out and annoyed people. It's part of the reason why they went to stamped tags rather than the uh, fabric tags. Now the final tip that I can give you to help date your vintage Ralph Lauren is by collection. So there are certain collections like the Polo Bear Collection or Snow Beach from the Polo Sport. Those things had a certain runtime. The Polo Bear, for instance, was made across many of the sub-brand lines and all sorts of different variations, but by 2001 had been uh, mostly uh, ceased in production. They did restart it in 2013, but you'll look at some of the production quality, the, the tags on the inside, stuff like that. You'll notice that there's a pretty distinct difference between a modern Polo Bear reprint and the original 90s Polo Bear uh, uh, line. And the same thing goes for Snow Beach. If you find a Snow Beach item that has the new uh, Ralph Lauren logos on it and it has a bunch of tags inside, it's probably one of the new reproductions. But if they have minimal amounts of tags, if they have the old Ralph Lauren uh, logos and patches and labels, then you're probably looking at a vintage Snow Beach piece and you should sell it to me for like 50 bucks, 50 bucks right now. I'll give you cash. Message me. Now as part of the collection guide, some of these items were made for certain 
fashion seasons for one year. You can go and find old catalogs, uh, forums that tell you, oh, this was from that particular year and only made in that year. That's where I would go next. If none of these things uh, worked out and it was harder to figure out the age of a particular piece, if it's an iconic piece, it may have only been produced one or two years or a couple of seasons and in that particular design. So that can help you right there. Now, I understand this isn't terribly definitive and it may leave you with more questions. Uh, maybe I answered some, I hope I did. The, the issue here is you have a huge international brand with so many different SKUs and sub brands that the differences in all of them make it hard to create rules. But hopefully this can actually help guide you to your items, age and uh, vintage nature or not. Um, and if you need some more help, uh, shoot us an email at the link below at loopfam1 at gmail.com. Send us some pictures. I'll do my best to help you figure it out. Um, and we'll see what we can come up with. But anyway, I hope this helped. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.